All right, welcome back to Bright Arrays, and we're looking at a study called What is Your Name? And we're looking at uh, Genesis chapter 32, the second half of that, the story about Jacob wrestling the man. And today we're looking at the last two, three verses, 30 through 32. And I've labeled this, Jacob's life is delivered, which I think is uh, a very important point here. And this kind of sums everything up. Kind of gives us an idea of who this man, because we've been asking this question throughout the study, who is this man? And uh, let's, let's look, at, look at the story and see so a couple more details I think will help. Now, Jacob, after he asked the man, the guy says that, and he says, um, Jacob says, for I have seen God face to face. That's what he says when he says, when he's, after he's wrestled this man. Now, I have to stop and really grapple with the identity of this man, because after, we, after he says, you know, I've seen God face to face. Okay, but it's a man. The text says that it was a man. Clearly, Hebrew, it's ish, it's the word that's always used for man. That's, that's who it is. It's a man. But Jacob says he saw God. Did he see man or did he see God? Or did he see both? Now let me add one more description into the mix. Look back at Hosea 12.4. Hosea 12, again, the section where Hosea is using the original Jacob to explain what's going to happen to Jacob in the future. He says, he strove with the angel and prevailed. Wait a minute, Hosea, come on. So now we have a man, an angel, and God. Now, turn with me back to Genesis chapter 18. We're told that the Lord all capital letters, Lord appeared to Abraham, and Abraham saw three men. In the following chapter, we find out that two of the men were angels. In that story, it appears that the Lord appeared in human form as well as the angels. Because right? it says that Abraham stayed behind and he was talking to the Lord, and then two are in, then there's three of them to begin with. Three of them all look like men. Two of the ones that look like men went into the city and they were called angels. The one that stayed behind, the one that stayed with Abraham, is called the Lord, Yahweh. So, we have here another little interesting mix here now. Now go with me to the book of Judges. I'm going to be jumping around a bit here. So go to Judges chapter 13. We have the description of the birth of Samson. His mother was barren. We don't know her name. In verse 3, we find that one day the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and told her that she would have a son, that he would be under a special vow, the Nazarite vow. The woman goes to her husband, Manoah, and tells him that a man of God came to her. So we have the angel of the Lord, and she says it's a man of God. And it looks like a man when he's shining. But the, the man of God had the appearance of the angel of God. So there was a man of God, but he looked like the angel of God. She notes that he did not tell me his name. All right, now we're getting some. Now we're getting somewhere, right? This sounds familiar. Angel. We have a man. It's an angel of God. So she says. So she saw the angel of Yahweh. She says a man of God that looked like the angel of God. So she says the angel of Yahweh. The angel of the Lord. And, she, and then he's a man of God, and he looks like the angel of God. Now Manoah prays and asks God to send the man of God to talk to him. Verse 9 says that the angel of God, Elohim, the angel of Elohim, came again, the angel of God. Manoah asks him if he is the man, which is Ish, again, the normal name for man, that came the other day, and he says, I am. Manoah asks a question, and verse 13 says that the angel of the Lord, angel of Yahweh, answered him. Again, in verses 15, 16, 17, and 18, we have him called the angel of the Lord. And so we have a person that appears, that looks like a man, a man of God, having the appearance of the angel of God, says he is the man, and he is called the angel of God, Elohim, divinity, and the angel of Yahweh, the covenant name, the angel of the Lord. So he's all of that. 
Notice verse 17, Manoah asked the angel of the Lord, what is your name? Uh, that's exactly what Jacob said, right? He said, what is your name? And what's the answer? The same answer. Why do you ask my name? It's actually the exact same Hebrew phrase. Why do you ask my name? Very interesting. To Manoah, he adds another little phrase. He doesn't say to Jacob, but he says this to Manoah, seeing it is wonderful. Why do you ask my name? Seeing it is wonderful. By which he, name, by which he is, means his name is beyond comprehension. The word appears in Psalm 139.6, which says, Such knowledge is too wonderful, too beyond comprehension, too amazing for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. So the angel of the Lord, the man, the angel of God, <laughs> answers Manoah's request for his name by saying that Manoah could not even comprehend his name if he told him. His name is too high. He could not attain this name. He couldn't attain to that level to understand the name. Who is this man that Jacob wrestles and Manoah and his wife see? It's all these different phrases combined together. Well, we have one more piece to add here. Back to Genesis. Jacob says he has seen God face to face, and yet his life was delivered. Okay, that's what Jacob says. Now we go back to Genesis, Judges chapter 13. After the angel of the Lord departs Manoah, Manoah says, We shall surely die, for we have seen God. Right? Okay, now, whoa, wait a minute. These are, these are very similar circumstances, right? They see the angel of the Lord, the angel of God, the man, the man that looks like the angel of God. All, same, all talking about the same person. And then he says that he's talking about, uh, and then he says that we've seen God. We've seen God face to face. And he says, we should die. We're going to die here. This is not good. <laughs> we are toast. Uh, we, can't, uh, we can't make it through this. And so, uh, what Manoah's wife says, you know, if God wanted us dead, then we would be dead. <laughs> he shouldn't have accepted our gift, our sacrifice, and had told them all these, you know, they, God, the angel, the man, wouldn't have told us all these things if he wanted us dead. Or right? he wouldn't have promised all these things about Samson if he wanted us dead. So yes, they saw God, but he delivered them, right? He didn't, they didn't die. They ex he accepted their sacrifice. Very interesting. He blesses them by accepting their sacrifice. And with Jacob, God blesses him. He receives the blessing of God. With Manoah and his wife, God accepts their sacrifice, and they are blessed with the son. The similarities between the two encounters are strikingly similar. They're, they're, they're amazing. We get some insight here because who are they meeting but the same person? So we can conclude that Jacob and Manoah and his wife saw the same person who was God, the angel of the Lord, the angel of God, the angel in the form of a man who appeared as a man but as the angel of God. This is what theologians have termed a Christophany, which is the appearance of the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, before He took on flesh and dwelt, on, dwelt among us. In other words, it was Jesus. He wrestled with the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. The, Jesus, before He became Jesus, before He came to be Jesus, the Savior, He was the Son of God, the perfect Lamb of God. And that's who Jacob wrestled. That's who Manoah and his wife saw and talked to. Amazing. Now verses 32 and 33 are the conclusion to the event. Jacob left the place limping, it says, because of what God did to his hip. It's been traditionally believed that Jacob had the limp for the rest of his life, like Paul and his thorn in the flesh, as a reminder of what happened to keep him humble because of his seeing God face to face. Remember, that's what Paul said. I had this thorn in my flesh, but because of these revelations that God has given to me, 
he put this, whatever that thorn was, he put the thorn in the flesh of Paul so that he would remain humble. That's what God does to Jacob. Jacob has this limp to keep him humble, to remind him that he met God face to face, and yet he lived. Now, when you get to heaven, you can ask him if that's true, if he did limp through all the rest of his life, or maybe it healed over time. Not sure. Doesn't, the Bible doesn't mention it again. But, nevertheless, he leaves that place limping. So, verse 32 is a notation made by, by our narrator, Moses. The very last verse, Moses adds this in here. He states that the people of Israel in his day, generations later, did not eat the sinew of the thigh of animals in remembrance of Jacob's hip. That tradition has been passed down over the centuries, and you know, practicing Jews still today will not eat that part of the animal in honor of Jacob. Their forefather, the name, their namesake, Israel. Very interesting. So that's that. Uh, that's the conclusion I come to. When you bring, when you bring, look at Judges, when you pray, compare Scripture to Scripture, and see that these stories are very similar. The words that the angel, the of the Lord, the angel of God, the man, says to them, and you compare that with what happens with Abraham in his story, meeting the man that is also the Lord who is also God, and then you see this where Jacob meets him. And, uh, yeah, very, very similar, very similar encounters. There's blessings involved that come from meeting uh, this man. And, uh, yeah, it's a very, it's mysterious, but, yeah, it's very, very compelling to think about that the Son of God appeared to them and was there. As we know, as Trinitarians as we are, we believe that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have always existed. And so, the Son of God was there before He became flesh and dwelt among us. He talked with people. He walked with people. There's lots of others. Jesus Himself talked about different places that He was in the Old Testament. You know, before Abraham was, I am. Um, that's what Jesus said. Abraham, look forward to my day, He says. And... Um, and he knew Abraham, and the people were offended by that because he, they were like, you don't know Abraham, you're not that old. Like, well, guess what? <laughs> I know Abraham right now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the end of that part of our study today. Come back and we'll wrap everything up on our study for this week.